come kids, come here. Look what I got. Come, come. Are you guys sure you want to see this? Yeah. What do you think it is? An ant. An ant? An ant? Look, look, look. Ah! It's gonna bite you. Let me see. Come let me here, see. come see, come see, come back, come back. It's not alive, it's dead. Come, come see, come and see. Comps. There are a lot of myths about the bee, but it's best we learn from them. Bee is Allah's creation. This is a sign for us humankind. Allah has created this for us to look at His greatness and say SubhanAllah. The bee even has its own chapter in the Qur'an. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim And your Lord inspired the bee saying, Take your houses in the mountains and in the trees and in what they build. Then eat of all fruits and follow the ways of your Lord made easy for you. There comes forth from their bellies a drink of varying colors wherein is healing for you. Verily, this is a sign for people who think. Does this mean that bees can live in our houses? Okay, Allah inspired bees to live beside trees, hills, and mountains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also made it possible for bees to live in hives made by humans. That's good. I wouldn't want any bees to live inside my bedroom. In order to find out more about this ayah, we got to learn more about bees. In today's show, we'll learn about the bees' life cycle, its function, and about the delicious honey. There are 25,000 kinds of bees identified in the world, the most well-known being the honeybee. Most bees are small from 2 millimeters long to 4 centimeters long. Honey bees as a group appear to have their center of origin in Southeast Asia, including the Philippines. South Asia, pretty warm and humid place. So how did they get here in North America, where it's cold and dry? And how did they survive? To understand how bees live here, we need to find out more about the morphology of a bee. Morphology is the form and structure of an organism or one of its parts. And today we will look at the different parts of a honeybee. The main parts of a bee are the head, the thorax, and abdomen. The thorax is where the legs and wings connect to the body. A honeybee has two pairs of wings, one in the front and one in the rear of the thorax. Did you know that bees don't have a nose? They use an antenna to sense odor and touch. The antenna is on the head as are the eyes. A bee's eyes see only six colors, and one of them is ultraviolet. Their eyes are compound, meaning they have lots of lenses to see through. The bee's eyes, like those of other insects, differ greatly from human eyes. They consist of a pair of compound eyes made up of numerous six-sided facets. Some insects, like the dragonfly, has 28,000 eye facets. Houseflies have 4,000. Despite all these eyes, a bee's vision is believed to be sharp only for a distance of about one meter. Wow! But you've forgotten one important thing. The stinger. The stinger's pointy end is barbed to make it impossible for the bee to remove it from its victim without losing some of its internal organs. The stinger is attached to the poisonous sac that is removed from the bee's body when it tries to fly away. Then the bee dies. The stinger is retracted inside the bee's body when it's not in use. Honeybees live in hives or colonies. A large hive may have over 100,000 bees. A hive includes one queen, hundreds of drones, and thousands of female worker bees. Only the queen bee can have babies and creates all the bees in the hive. That was an amazing fact, don't you think? Yeah, honeybees are such amazing creations of Allah. Hey, Rabi, do you know anyone who can tell us more about bees? Like where do honeybees live and how they live? Yes, Dr. Barry Brown. He's in Saskatchewan, Canada. He knows all about bees. Would you like to meet him? I would love to. Hello, Dr. Brown. My name is Robbie, and this is my friend Jasmine. Hello and we're from the Sustainable Earth Show. 
Well, welcome to the Bar Double B Honey Ranch. This is Dr. Barry Brown, and he's a professor at the university and does bee farming as a hobby. Can you please tell us where we are? Well, we're at a honey farm, and we're in the processing facilities for the honey farm. We have the bees out in different farmers' fields throughout the local area. When we've picked the honey up from the fields, we bring it into this plant. Is there a term you call this farm? Yes, it is a apiary, which uh, is a term for uh, beekeeping. And what I do as a farmer, as a bee farmer, is called apiculture. And the process that we use is just called beekeeping. How about you? Is there a term that they call you especially? Uh, they call me an apiarist uh, or a bee. We're going to start taking the honey out of the frame. So Roberta right now is going to pick up the box and put it down onto the uh, extracting stand. She will roll the box onto the, what we call a deboxer, which takes the frames out and puts them up on the extracting knife. Now, you see that the frames will go through and if you watch right down in here, you'll see a frame come through and see the uh, honey where the wax has been cut off, so the hot knife cuts the wax off the frame. And now you can see the honey is exposed and the frames are going through to the trough that holds them. So now at this point, we'll go along and show how they go into the extractor. And if you just go up close beside David and Matthew and Tristan, you'll see what they're doing. They're just checking to make sure that the knife cut all of the wax off. This tray right here is full of 120 frame. Now you can see them scratching off the excess uh, wax. If we left that wax on there, then the honey wouldn't come out. So there, we've got almost got a tray full of frames, so now we can go to the extractor and see them loaded. So if you just follow me back this way a little ways, we'll move on to the extracting area. Well, we will now walk up to the extractor and you'll be able to see exactly what she's doing to get the frames into the extractor. And you remember that the extractor is the same as a centrifuge. And if you watch here, the ram lever will come back and she'll hook on to 30 frames. See, there it is. And now she uses the air ram to push them in. And that pushes the dry ones out the other end, the ones that we've already spun out. Now we have closed the gate and we'll move the uh, unloading tray back. Now you can see how it spins. It's actually going backwards right now. So now when she starts the extractor and gives it a little help to get going, you can see how the centrifuge works. Instead of spinning this way, it spins sideways. And if we left the lid up, you people would all be covered with honey because honey would come flying out. So we get the lid, yes, and it would be in your hair and all over. Honey's coming out. Yes, isn't it? So we'll get about 500 pounds of honey coming out as the extractor speeds up. Hi folks, good to see you again. What did you learn about honeybees today? We learned about the different parts of the bee. Oh, that's great, Harris. Now you'll be able to use that in biology. We learned how a bee colony works. Oh yes, just like a little civilization, aren't they? And what did you learn? Can you imagine if there's no bees, no beautiful flowers and tasty fruits? Oh, that would be really hard to imagine. And don't forget about sweet honey. Oh no, we won't forget about the honey. In fact, we have a bunch of honey laid out here for you to taste. We have honey from different parts of the world. This dark honey is from Jordan. We have honey from Saskatchewan. We have light honey and we have dark honey. So there's no reason not to just dig in and taste the honey of Saskatchewan and some other parts of the world. Go for it. As you people get sweeter and sweeter, and I'll bet you're getting stickier and stickier, I want to thank you for visiting the Bar Double B Honey Ranch, and I hope you've learned a great deal about honeybees, and I know you've learned a great deal about honey, and I seem to be enjoying it. And so with that, this is another episode of the Sustainable Earth Show.